Uh, my name's Lucas. Uh, me and a buddy of mine started an actual a game studio called Kill Smile Studios. Uh, we work on games and stuff like that. Um, we found the Unity game engine, uh, which uh, if you go to it's just unity3d.com. Uh, it's a free game engine. Just try out. Um, you can pretty much use on any device. Um, it does mobile. Uh, they actually just introduced Flash, which is pretty cool. You can actually do a Flash player. Um, and then also, it's like 1500 bucks for the Pro version. Uh, but Unity Free, you can download it. Um, you can do Android, iOS, iOS Pro. Stuff like that. They also have a, um, just to start out, they also have a nice support system, uh, which I can get to that later, but they have like the community for like their forms and stuff. Um, so I'll just start off by showing you off. Um, just so you know, I don't know every little thing about Unity. So, but this is just a demo game file uh, that someone made. But just to show you, it is very. Uh, it's it's somewhat complicated sometimes if you don't know what you're doing, but. Uh, just to start out, you just have like a couple scenes, like you have your scene view, uh, then you're actually going to have like the game, which is what the camera renders out to. Um, you have your hierarchy, and the hierarchy is uh, what is actually all in the game, like each piece in the game. So if you select them, you can see they're each running. Uh, and then you have your project folder, which your project folder is basically like here's the boot camp demo, and then you just have um, Pretty much, if, whenever you want to enter your own assets in, you just put it in the asset folder and it loads them up. Um, it can take pretty much any uh, 3D file, any image file. It actually reads off of most like Blender, uh, Autodesk Maya, 3ds Max. It actually reads those files. You don't even have to export the models if you don't want to, as long as you have it on your computer. It actually runs it. Um, so you have that in your project folder, and there's just all sorts of standard assets, but uh, Blender, I don't know anything about Blender's like a 3D, yeah, 3D modeling pro, yeah. software. 3D modeling software. And this pretty much works like a 3D modeling software. So um, to move around, if you like have a mouse, if you hold the Alt button, you actually rotate the camera around. Um, if you have the, uh, you can actually hold R, Alt and you hold the right click. And you actually zoom in what you want to do to see. Um, you can like scroll with the mouse button as well. Um, and then if you hold Alt and you click down the middle mouse button, you uh, can pan. Um, and then pretty much the final thing is, is like if you hit the F button, it like finds or like I call it focuses on an object, so it actually like centers it, so you can zoom right in on it and see whatever you need to see. Um, so this is basically like uh, this is actual like a game that a, another studio made that was actually like a demo prod. Uh, Project that so you can actually just kind of see what all you, know, you can do because um, you can also look uh, if you hit spacebar that also zooms and brings that up but you can see like a wireframe form you can see like the texture and the wireframe so there's all kind of sorts of uh, views you can do uh, with uh, and as far as I know for since I really don't use any other engine it's kind of interesting like you also have like the inspector where each object can have find one has just scripts connected to it, so you don't have to have a full class script anymore. You can literally have just like I'm basically more of an artist person than a programmer, so I literally just make quick little scripts and actually attach it on there, and it works. You don't have to make one big class script, which is uh, pretty interesting. Um, just to show off though like what it can do um, also in the game screen you have uh, what they call like stats which is pretty interesting it's kind of hard to see but as you're running it it'll tell you like how fast your game is running so it'll tell you like frames per second all the time um, it'll tell you what draw calls are which means each time it has to render a 3d object that's like how many draw calls so if you hit you hit the play button at the top it right away you got in-game mode editing, and you 
can see how your player moves, you know, see all the controls that you have, and everything like that. And then as you look up here, you can say, like, I've got 200 frames per second, so there's really nothing, like, moving around too much where it's slowing down the machine. Um, and what's also kind of cool about Unity is um, within the menus, they it's real basic stuff, so actually I'm going to just open up a, What you can do is you can open up projects or create new projects. When you create new projects, you you know, you know set the folder wherever you want it to set to. Um, you have all these Unity packages, so there's different character controllers, um, your standard apps, like just scripts and physical materials that I can, can show you here. And then different Okay, so when you make a new one, you can choose to have standard assets or standard assets mobile. Um, when you have standard assets, I mean, there's there's already preset, which is pretty cool. They already have preset, like a first-person controller, a third-person controller. And on the inspector, um, it actually shows you just, like, it kind of shows your preview right here. You have, like, what the model kind of looks like. Uh, and then all the scripts that are attached to it. Uh, Um, in, the, in your in your menus up here, there's so many different things you can create. So the main thing that they revolve around in Unity is called the game objects. Um, so you can create others. So you can create basic 3D objects if you want. So if I create a plane, you have a plane right there um, that it creates. Um, it uses the what they call like occlusive cooling, which where it only shows one side. So when you go underneath it, you don't see it. Um, so that like when you that that's kind of uh, a thing, so that you can only have a plane on one side, the person can only be on one side of the plane. Um, then in the inspector, it kind of just shows off like you got your transform, so you actually know where it is in the scene, in the level, uh, where it like of course the x y z coordinates, um, rotation, and then the scale of it. So uh, if you wanted to scale it up, you can just click on the x and kind of increase it. So make it like a real big plane. Another thing you can do also is if you hit the, um, the E key, it changes it to your rotation right on the screen. Uh, your R is your scale, so you can actually scale that way instead of always going on here. And then, of course, W goes back to your moving. So you can really move it wherever. Um, and then all you have to really do to get something on the screen from your project is you just click and you just place it on there. Uh, Once you hit play, uh, it's already got a script set up where it's like a first-person shooter where you just walk around. <coughs> um, so Unity in itself kind of, the whole, the actual development team is pretty nice that they actually make stuff for you and it's pretty easy that you can um, already like pre-developed stuff without even like scripting a whole backbone of the game when it's already set and made for you. Um, does, it, does it have like a physics engine? So yeah, it does. Um, so just to go over like with Unity, like I'll just start with the file. So really what you have is you can start out with your build settings. Um, I'll just go over the menus here. But you switch, you can switch to web player. It makes a web player. Uh, makes the PC, Mac, the iOS, the Android flash player. Um, you can go to Xbox, but you have to like contact them and they have to move around uh, or, or change stuff for you. Um, and then literally when you have your scenes built in here, you just hit build and you can choose where to save it. Um, so that's basically like what you use for your file. You have your assets where you can create different jobs. Um, they use three different languages, which is JavaScript, C Sharp, and Boo. So whichever language you're comfortable in, you can actually make it. Um, you can make Sorry, with, with that, when you select the language, it can still render to any device you want? Yeah, no matter what language, it just it compiles it all and, and sends it. Um, what this also can do is I'll, um, a prefab is a, an object that it actually basically spawns into the scene. So you no longer have like something hidden or off to the side, like maybe off to the side, like frozen in your game. It actually 
from the app, from the project, it actually just it put, puts one in there, like it calls it a clone, and it clones it in there. Um, so that's kind of what like a prefab is, and then you just have like a material, which is what has the uh, the actual like texture of the object. Um, of course, animation, explanatory. Um, then you have different lens flares you can do, and like you can do actually different physics materials. You can make your own physics material. They actually already have pre-made physics material, uh, which I can show you in a sec. And then you go to game object where you can create, again, anything like I said, you can actually create rag dolls. Um, so you can actually, when a dead enemy gets killed, you can start playing one around with his arms like he's dead. Um, they actually just added that you can create your own trees. So they actually have a tree builder into it, which is uh, pretty good. And then within components, you have all that. So like you have physics where you can add rigid body, uh, you can add colliders, so you have box colliders, spheres, uh, terrain. They have claw, um, and then they also have joints. Um, when you create a cube, um, so the cube, basically, when you look in the inspector, it has all your attributes. Uh, so it always has to have like a mesh filter and a mesh render. That's basically like the color that you see. Um, and then you have like, here's a box collider. Um, and then as it says, it has there's a material. There's actually no set material, but if you select it, you can have bouncy ice. So ice will just be slick. Um, so if I just click bouncy, and then if I add a component of a physics, like a, a rigid body onto it, um, right there you actually have a mass. So when you have another object that has a bigger mass, it can push smaller mass objects, but smaller can't push bigger. Um, and then you have use gravity or um, is kinematic, which means nothing can be used. But I mean, if you just hit play, the physics, it does, I mean, it does it all for you. Or it just, the key will just sit there and bounce. Um, and since there's no drag, it doesn't slow down. But if you increase drag, there it'll stop bouncing. Um, so you, you have to sort of select what things you want the physics engine to apply yeah. to. Yeah. Okay. So yep. it's not like it's not like it applies to everything by default. You just you have to say, this thing I want physics yeah. on. Yeah, like you want to add certain you add a component to a certain object yeah. and okay. it makes it work. Um, they also have a terrain crit uh, you can actually make a terrain which is pretty cool too. Um, <coughs> so if you want to make that big mountain and actually let me does it say reticulating spline? Yeah. Uh, let me add a direction light real quick. Okay. You can add lights to what it. Light what did you say? I'm too old. No one played SimCity. Well, I didn't hear what you said. Articulating spline. Oh, I don't, I don't know what that is. Where that was it? from SimCity. SimCity, yeah. I played SimCity a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for the train editor, you have like, basically you have your, this will like go equal out. This will be the rays. You can select like a star and it literally makes a mountain <laughs> and it's I mean to show you even how big it is uh, I mean like that looks Basically, this is like, I mean, as far as the way I was, and it looks big, but I mean, this is a big mountain. And I mean, and then what you can go and do is and you have like a little square texture of like grass, and you can like just paint on texture, which is not heavy. Uh, but you can paint on grass, rock, and, uh, you know, just do any kind of a a gigantic mountain. Um, so like, we, we, if you play that, will you be able to actually like go over any terrain, or is there some terrain that's yeah, impossible? Yeah, you, you can. You can actually, what you do is you set in the character, so with the character controller, the slope limit, oh, okay. is you're going to like select, like you want like a 20 degree, like that's yeah. how far you can walk up. You okay. can walk up a huge, you know, right. if I set it to like 90, of course I can walk up anything. Yeah. 
Um, but that's within the character controller because they'll have like, um, they already have like a mouse look script so that follows where how your mouse looks and then you just, uh, Unity has a built-in character controller that that's what uh, controls that. Um, and without, I mean, let me, I'll have to load up so you get to see the game we're working on right now. Because without the scripting side is, it's hard to explain without showing you what I did. Okay. So this is actually a 2D game uh, that we made. Um, it actually is it's in a 3D environment, which is kind of interesting. It's 2D. Um, but uh, my partner, uh, he's the one who's drawing all the drawings. Um, and I, I'm basically the 3D artist and the programmer. So since we're making a 2D game, um, but basically, like, yeah, we have it scripted, so you have an enemy and you can walk back and forth, um, and then you just have different, like, attacks, so you can attack, that kind of fuzz. He attacks and kills a guy, and then he uses his little duck gun and he turns it into a block, you can push it. So this is, again, in the physics material where he has ice, we use ice, and then um, you have different, uh, like, here's a switch, and it shows you that it releases another object. Um, and so we kind of, that's like a jumper block, it's supposed to project them out. When you get in a certain area and you like hit a button, it lines up the, these little blocks so you can actually walk on them. Oh, and then if you run out of time, they don't do it. Um, you can, of course, jump on these guys and then you empty them out and go to basically the next level. Um, but um, just to kind of show you like what mine is, is basically it's all 2D images, which is kind of interesting. Um, but stuff for like uh, the this switch here, um, basically what I have is I made my own script and so you know I'm not a scripter so it might be unorganized doing that. My you use Blue script? No, I use I use JavaScript I'm more. And it's actually not a JavaScript, it's more of like a Unity script, you can call it. Um, but basically with uh, Unity what you have to do is you actually have to um, and I can show you on the Unity uh, part two is you have to actually like reference objects. Um, so like where the uh, where this jumper block, like that's the one, that's the monster that spawns. Um, and then where the, where it spawns is this transform, which is a spawn point. I have it right here. So this is the monster that spawns. Um, here's the, the place and it's a you consider it a transform. And then this is the this is a transform where the camera actually focuses, like how the camera moves. Um, and then of course you have a camera and have all these variables. Basically what it does is you actually have to access the, the, uh, the script, which is a camera con scrolling, the camera scrolling script on the camera itself, and then it has to change its target, which is gonna be like the cutscene point, and then it waits, uh, and then right here, you what they, what Unity calls is instantiates, that's when you create, clone, create the clone object, so, uh, Actually, I can show you even in the, the, the block right there that's dead. That's how it says clone. That's actually just what an object that is instantiated. Um, and then it turns into another block that's this uh, morph block up here. Um, so each time it's going through to my prefabs folder right here. And, and then it, like, here's the... Uh, I don't know. Here's the duck morph block, the prefab that it's taking, and then here's like the, the dead enemy. One of those two. Um, of course, I have it. Try to keep it all organized. But basically, with Unity, I know they like, or with with Unity, you more or less like you have a whole set of objects, and each only the scripts you want are on certain objects. So like, not all. Uh, so like with my blue block, all I have is a. Actually, no, not him. 
like this orange block that moves. I have like an AI script where he has a bunch of certain speeds, um, and he's got waypoints that you set, and you make an array for that. And um, when you do scripting as well, um, there's function start, which happens before anything starts. Um, and then you make your own functions. Um, so I have all these extra functions. But then in each script as well, you have function update, which is going to happen every frame. Um, so every frame, like this part right here, uh, is moving the, uh, like the, the rigid body of the, uh, of the character, of the uh, orange block like between two points and as you can see there's like a little yellow or there's a little orange W there kind of hard to see so that kind of marks like the two points it's going between. Um, so do, do, you, do you write like <coughs> I mean are there other actions you can like write scripts that are sort of like callbacks so when something happens it'll kick off that script and do something? Yeah. Like, is, that, yeah. is that basically hit the model of how it works? Or? Yeah. So that's basically like the whole <coughs> the whole thing of like uh, like how you have to like you have to create just create a random variable script of this object and it like it gets the script component and then it like it can access that script from mm -hmm. another component. It's I see that as kind of like it sucks that you have to keep like connecting objects to other objects um, but then otherwise you wouldn't Otherwise, you'd have all the objects connected at some time, and it would like bog down the, the computer. But anytime you like, anytime I have this right here, like I just I access this variable and I increase the variable. Um, there's different ways to do it too. Like I don't know if my way is always the best, but there's ways where you can send messages. Um, so you just like send a message with like the name of a function, and any object in the game that has that function. Oh, okay. Have that script has a script attached to it with the name of that function. And yeah, it does. that's kind of what I was wondering. If there's like a way to, like I was trying to imagine. Like, it seems like in games like that, you have some situation where your character gets to s some point and does an action. Yeah. And then you want to kick off some other actions mm -hmm. because he did that thing. Yeah. Like, so it sounds like that you, you you could pass a message and then these other scripts yeah. get kicked off. Yeah. Yeah, and you can. It's just like I <coughs> I mess around with messages before and I was just like yeah. started like having problems with them because I don't know I just didn't they weren't some messages weren't being received oh, okay. um, and stuff like that um, but also another thing to help too um, so with scripting um, Unity has a pretty cool under the help a, a scripting reference where you can literally search all the scripting terms so say I wanted like like if you want to if uh, you want to get an input or a button just type in like just type in button and it'll tell you like first you can make um, a GUI button so you can make a button on the screen if you want um, but then even more than that you can do uh, like input get mouse button down or get button so when you click on that it's kind of cool that they actually give you like a sample of the code so when you click like the fire one button which is going to be the mouse or the control um, it creates uh, a projectile object that you connect. Um, so that's what's really nice with their um, scripting. And you can change it. So this is JavaScript right here. You can change it to C sharp. You can change it to Boo. Um, really no difference, I mean, for runtime or anything of what language you use. Um, but it kind of shows you they have the whole uh, different things you can use. Um, Sorry if I'm being random, it's just there's like so much stuff that it can do. Um, uh, you mentioned like a projectile. I was always curious, like in games, like if you have something like that, like you're shooting a gun and mm -hmm. you've got bullets. Like how does that work? <laughs> um, so with first person shooter, and I've actually, they actually, what's another thing uh, to look at too is on Unity's site is they do have tutorials. They have. Uh, Um, they actually have a first-person shooter tutorial, well, and uh, a bunch more. Maybe not. Maybe they took it off. Uh, but uh, what it is is it uses uh, what you do is you shoot like a ray cast, what they call a ray cast, which is just a visible line, okay. like from the point of center of the camera straight, and if it hits a player, that sends a message to that object saying take damage. Okay. And then 
whatever variable you set. Um, and then, but with like rockets, you they make it so you like a, you make an actual rocket and you have a rigid body yeah. in it and it has okay. a force onto it. Okay. I've never used Unity, and we probably weren't doing it right, but uh, for this 2D platform I worked on, we just when you pushed a button, it generated a new entity. Okay. And that would just go, and then it would do you would collision so detection, and then yeah, okay. yeah. kick off events. So and yeah, and actually, just to show you like this, the the little the depth gun, that right there, uh -huh. just it just it just uh, okay. So the duck shot, all it has is a it has a, a rigid body on it. And within within my uh, what calls a duck gun, it adds a uh, it creates it and then it, it creates the duck shot and it makes the like this is the uh, the prefab. And then it uses the it uses the position of, a, of the transform that I have set, or the and I have an invisible game object. Just use that, and then it takes it and it takes the rigid body, adds a velocity to it, and it makes it like a vector two. And vector two is two D, so it's just x y. There's vector three, which will use the z, but it just adds a ten, which makes it shoot out one way. Or if it's or and that's a, if it's shooting out right, or if it's shooting out left. Going to go negative ten that way, and that's just what makes it go. Um, as far as like a projectile. Um, another big thing also that you can use that we use actually a lot is what they have is called tags. So uh, whenever you collide with an object, usually what you do is you have a function, a set function is called like on collision enter. Um, you actually check the tag. Like if it's a player, then it does a certain object. If it doesn't. Uh, then it then it like maybe it just it, it forgets about it or uh, so like with okay so like. The, the walls here are like infected, is what we call it. But when you push this that has a certain attack, or when it, what's in the, when uh, this wall has a tag of like that it's an infected area, you actually just click it and it like sucks it in. So then it realizes that and then it spawns the enemy. <laughs> so like using tags, um, it just, it like verifies, you know, what object you're actually hitting. Uh, the same with like when I was hitting this enemy, I'll make sure that I'm hitting an enemy block and then receiving damage. Um, you also use layers, and these are actually physical layers, so you can actually choose like what layers collide with what layers. Um, and how you actually edit that is under project settings. Under the edit, um, you actually can go to physics, and you can actually choose if it's checked, so like the default will affect my background layer and my base blocks. But any of these unchecked, they won't affect it. Um, so that's something big with physics. Because um, I have a lot of different things that affect. Um, another with the project settings, which is good to have, is the inputs. So you can actually make your own inputs. These are set inputs. Um, so you have your basic fire one is the mouse zero, which is your left. And then you have uh, like fire two is going to be your going to be uh, mouse one, and then fire three is mouse two. Uh, and then you have different ones like jump. And they're just, they're not really, like, like the ones I've made is I've made, like, the gun, the duck gun and tag. And really all you need to do is you just need to name it, and then you put, like, what the button is, like the positive button, or, like, if there's an alternative. Like, so with your fire, you can either use the mouse zero, or some people uh, do, like, left alt or positive, and then the alternative is mouse one. Um, so then when you, in the update, when you just have
inside this code input get button down attack or called duck gun, it realizes that that's a, a uh, like an input that you created, and so then it runs the, the code of the function. Uh, um, also with Unity, like there's a lot. Uh, what I like too is like if you're ever stuck, um, the best thing to do is like click these little question marks right here. And if you click that, it opens up their the Unity's uh, reference manual. So it literally tells you what each like variable means. So what the material is, you know, what its trigger does. Its trigger is when you click it, it's the collider becomes invisible, and you have a code that if you get in the trigger, if, if the character runs into the trigger zone, something happens, or while it's in a trigger zone, um, something happens, and then it affects your size. Uh, and then it actually explains it more with triggers and talks about like compound colliders of how you. Um, there's different kind of colliders, like there's a mesh collider, and it actually just takes the 3D mesh and makes the collider itself, which is very costly to the computer, so it's better to make like a bunch of quick box um, compound colliders. Um, and then it just kind of tells you like what you need to have as far as collision. So like with, uh, to actually have, to actually have something collide with another thing, you need to have at least one object to be able to have a rigid body connected to it uh, if you wanted. They both have to have rigid bodies, um, stuff like that, to where, I mean, you can, if you go to their reference manual, I mean, you've got all the different stuff that it does, like you can click on flares and it talks about, you know, where was it? Oh, man. This pathfinding filter? Uh, yeah, there is, they actually just added that, so they added pathfinding that I haven't. So what is that? Like, like AI pathfinding where like you literally like if an object is here and you have a bunch of colliders it'll like find its own path around okay. it like <coughs> automatically that's for like if you do that for ants <laughs> uh, uh, that's for like if you have like AI controlled yeah. objects yeah. yep um, so Um, another thing you can do too is you can do different lens layers. So as you can see, like right here, it actually shows like the, the little bubble and the stars, and like it gets hazy. Um, so there's like a lot of different visual effects it does. Uh, they just added a new particle system that I haven't messed with a lot, but they added the Shuriken particle effector for emitters. So basically, like when you're in a level, you can just go create other particle system and it just has one made for you. And then you have all these variables you can affect. Uh, so you can do like a start color. You can actually go between two different colors. Select like yellow or green or something. Like red. And it kind of does like the in-betweens. Uh, your size you can increase. So there you got like fire. that up to like what a realistic like uh, particle. Yeah, you can. I'm not sure how they did it because like the old system it used it like it actually like rendered planes and you had like a picture of a fire and actually made it look a little bit better. Um, but yeah, you can actually add Sure, where it was, but yeah, you can add like the planes and, and actually has planes for each particle, and yeah, have like realistic fire. Um, and within these two, I mean, you can use, I haven't messed with, I haven't needed particle emitters uh, lately, but the old particle emitter was.
it just starts making a bunch of square loops. Um, and then you can So, like, what you do with that is that's just an empty object with, like, a box collider. Um, no rendering with other material, so it's just a movable collider. Um, that's what, like, all these are. They're just uh, invisible collider with the box, and then they have, like, I just put a little script on it to actually draw it so you can still at least see it, because otherwise, with this script not on it, Without like this script on it, you wouldn't even you wouldn't even see it. Oh. But that's just like, that's what they call like the gizmos. So you can actually like the with this little camera picture right here is a gizmo to tell you hey there's a camera there. Uh, this little green outline is all gizmos. So like you can like turn them all off and on and stuff like that just so you can see. Them. So you can have a level of risk game where people get used to playing in 2D mode. And then suddenly the camera swivels and yeah. then three D and yeah. Yeah, we've thought of yeah. <laughs> but that'd be fun enough. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, with the I don't know, with the uni engine it's just it's more it's easier to learn, I've I've seen to find. Um, and like all you have to do is uh, like build settings, like you can go to iOS and you can go like switches the platform and it switches it all up for you. And then literally what you do is Unity makes, for at least for the for the iPhone, they make a remote that you download that wirelessly connects to your computer where you can actually test the game out, mm -hmm. like using the touch screen and make sure everything works. Um, but, and then they have their own, um, with, when you start up Unity and make your own project, they have their own standard assets of mobile, so they have their own control setups for you know, they already have it scripted for all touchscreen buttons, so it's really like less work you have to do. Um, and now it's going to take forever. So do you mostly program in the, <coughs> the JavaScript yeah. uh, stuff? Not yeah, I mean, I could probably switch to C Sharp because, I mean, I haven't really done too much programming. I've programmed a lot when I was, like, in high school, took a couple classes since then, like, in college. But I do, I'm mostly more of the art side of it, but I understand, like, I can learn languages and understand basically how they go. Um, Uh, 
Um, it can also do a lot of like movie stuff. You actually have to get the pro version to get movies, so when you do cut scenes and stuff like that, it'll tell you like, you can have audio filters, it'll tell you you need the pro version only. Um, but like this is the whole reference guide that it shows you, you know, you can add these different image effects, like blurring on, uh, different likes how the whole outside is all unfocused. Uh, Stuff like that where Unity has a pretty good setup and I think they're on version like 3.5. Uh, when I started using it, I was at like 2.6. So. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that it's, if you go to the community, that's where you're gonna learn your most because that's where I've learned the most. Like if I don't know something, Usually someone else does, or I have seen it. Uh, so if you go to the forum, basically they'll have each thing so you can learn how to use their, their GUI button system and everything. And you can actually make a multiplayer networking game on it. Um, anything with the iOS and Android development. Um, so if you like go on the scripting, of course they have a bunch of people just ask questions and stuff. Maybe to show you like a project I did, I guess, just in Unity is, and this was within oh, 10 weeks, so my models aren't the best, but I made, basically made a multiplayer game where you can host your own game, and, mo and I mostly didn't script, I didn't script most of this, I just interpreted it, but basically you just walk around and uh, you can... Uh, you can throw a grenade, so you can like throw a grenade, the physics react, so objects move, and I mean this is all like pre-made scripts that, uh, that I found that someone posted of a project, uh, so there's all kind of and people can join in your game. Basically, in within like when you, you can go when instead of quick playing a game, you can actually look at what games are being hosted. Um, so, did you do this with the uh, free version or yeah. the fifteen hundred dollar? This, this is the free version. Does your studio use the fifteen hundred dollar version? Right now, we're using the free until like we're gonna roll yeah. up to the the pro eventually. Um, what are the big drivers to up to the pro? They can play like movies. They can play movie files and do a lot more of the rendering effects. Like a, as I saw, as you've seen in the reference, like not all the rendering effects can be done okay. like in the free version. Mm -hmm. um, can you export all devices with the free version? Yeah, you can. So you can access, cool. you can export to Windows, Mac. Uh, Does the web-based player? that you mentioned earlier work okay, or is it? Yeah, it does, and actually what, but from what I know, Google Chrome, uh, like, actually supports it, but you actually have to download the Unity web player. Um, let me see here. I, let me find the page that I, because I can... So, so it has like a separate plugin for the Yeah, browser. it has its own uh, Is that plugin. true for, for all the browsers or just Chrome? Yeah, it can use on any browser. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is the start of Block Monster that we did. So this is like the web player right now um, built into it. Um, so it loads. So basically, I mean, this is what Block Monster started out to be um, that we did in like 12 hours. Mostly, again, using other people's scripts. Um, but, like, this is just a web player. I mean, it's just... And this is set. This is set. I, there's multiple settings you can actually do with it, too. Is uh, when you go in the build settings to the web player, you can make it a stream, or you can make it offline. Uh, 
it actually just got, like, I think it just got a bunch more uh, support to it. Uh, but within the web player, and then all it does is it just uh, saves in a folder. And I actually, like, with this, I went and edited and added text, like, to talk about what it was and different movements and stuff to actually how to play it. Um, And again, this is all like TV imaging and... Oh, There's so much stuff that I probably didn't cover that we can do. The, so tell us a little about the Omaha Game Developer Association. Okay, yeah. Uh, so the Omaha Game Developer Association uh, is run by a guy here in town named Dave Mark, who used to be an AI programmer for a bunch of studios. Uh, we meet once a week. Uh, Usually, it used to be in this place called Camp Omaha, but they closed down. Uh, but we just meet like the third Saturday of every month, and it's just all game people. Mostly, it's actually mostly a lot of programming people that, uh, what we'll hold is we'll hold like conference it, like we'll actually Skype with people. Uh, Dave can actually get some people uh, to Skype with us. Uh, in the past, we've gotten Andy Schatz, who uh, he's actually creating the game Monaco. If you've ever heard of it? It's on like Xbox, but it's just like I mean, he used to be a, a programmer for uh, like EA, and he's made like Wildlife Tycoon, Venture Africa, and Venture Arctic. So there's some good games that he's made. Um, Did you guys ever do that? I noticed the let them dare thing. Yeah, that that? yeah, they did that th this last time. Actually, it was that was only like three or four people that did it. Oh, really. What so is what is let them dare? You have about forty eight hours to make a game. In any tool set you can. In any use tool set, it? and you just submit it, and then like there's judges and they play it and like the best game wins. Um, most of the time, like games, like if you ever heard of World of View. Uh, or I think even maybe Braid or Machinarium, they're like, they're indie games, and a lot of times those games, they've sprung out from one of theirs. Like, they started just with their concept, and then they further developed it. Um, so you're saying the ultimate goal is to get into the Humble Bundle? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I don't know who else they talked with. They talked with a bunch of other... Um, People, we actually, if you ever have played the game Battle Bears, we actually have a couple of those people uh, from Skyboo, the actual makers of it, they're actually their studios in Omaha. So we actually get those guys, those guys come out too. Uh, so it's a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty cool group that, I mean, we just talk about anything game design wise. I'm trying to think of who else they've had talked to. Oh, we had uh, Ian Schreiber, who's like a big to be a programmer in the game and he's like teaches now uh, but he's big into game design he has like his own book out uh, we've had so where are you guys going to be now that camps closed? I have no idea <laughs> how many game developers show up Mm, anywhere, I mean, some could be like, you know, like this, or it could be like 10, 15. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. There's no idea that many people. <laughs> yep. So then here's another guy that they had. Uh, do it. They used to meet at Scooters, and then it was like, Scooters were really tiny, though. It kind of sucks. And they closed at like 9. Uh, but yeah, so like they had a couple, like they had this guy talking, so... Uh, talking about uh, 
the culture between the AAA and the indie development scene of games, um, just stuff like that. So. What's what's AAA? AAA is going to be just any big game, oh, okay. and then the indie game is going to be like people that make that like one person makes a game. Yeah. Movie. Okay. Uh, but yeah. So is there? I'm just kind of curious, like game development. Is there? Is there like? So, like with Unity, it's, it's like a product, right? So is there? Is there good like open source? Um, game engines and stuff around that people can build like legitimate games with? Um, I mean, you can make it sell a game and you mm. like just you can build it with a free version. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know if they can have like Game Maker Pro. I don't know if that's free to use. Mm. Um, other than that, I mean, it's pretty much some of the guys like at the Omaha Game Development. They actually are like writing their own and stuff yeah, like that yeah. for their games, so it's kind of because uh, like I've, I've so I just kind of like I barely know anything about this, but I like saw some things about like um, there's some JavaScript stuff like 3D and physics engines that are you know open source kind of things. And I'm just like curious if people like are they good enough to use in a real game or? <laughs> yeah, I I believe so. Like I've, I can't I can't off the top of my head I can't think of the names, but there's a couple people that they use. Like, uh, I can't think of what they call it, the game engine, but like they'll use like yeah, the different plugins and the different JavaScript plugins mm -hmm. and any other like C++ and whatever they find. Mm -hmm. Does anyone do the Spring engine the real time? I don't think so. I think they use some sort of like an O. Real time strategy. The one we used is Impact. It was all HTML5, but mm. it's a $99 license. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But so it's so it's not um, open source at all. There's no open source version. Not popular in a while. No. Yeah. I haven't used this before, but this one called Spaceport is, uh, there, I know there's a guy from Omaha who left to go to San Francisco to work on Facebook games that use this. Really? And they, they translate to iOS, cool, all the other platforms. Um, is Unity the most popular in the Omaha game development? I believe so, yeah, because yeah. like, like uh, how uh, Battle Bears, and it's free, like you guys can get it for free, it, uh, it uses Unity. They use Unity for the iOS development, iPad, and everything. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, but I mean, it's well. I mean, at least for us, it seems like it's getting more popular. Um, but there's still the people that just I don't know how to be. I'll see if I'm on their computers and just, they'll have their code up. What do you think of evolution? RTS. I know it's the old thing. Um, there's also well, and there's also like you can actually get the Unreal engine. Um, but it only like works on Windows, like the Unreal SDK. They have that, but it's like they just have a free to just mess around with. Like you can't really edit any of the code. You just can make a first-person shooter, I guess. Um, and then there is I haven't messed with it, but there's like the Crytek Engine three or two, or three. and that made like the 
crisis games. Call of Duty was all the source, right? Yeah. This is like the demo game you'll get right now with uh, with Unity. So like they're like in the rain. No, that's what this is like. I don't know. This is what they set um, yeah. for the scripting, but they've got like the angle. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but yeah, like all the graphics, like the quick graphics you can make, and you can see like in the, in the upper right, like you've got like it's like 80, it's still 80, 70 per second. So if you want to do a, like a massive like, multiplayer thing, do they host? Yeah, there's actually a couple uh, like Photon, like the Photon server they call it or whatever. Uh, there's like, like different plugins you can do, <coughs> or you can just host it straight on like like the game I made. I just did the, the Unity server that it automatically connects to. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure yeah you can make like a massive multiplayer like Mag or something probably, but you'd have to like mess with the rendering. Another thing too is, well, and how you can make it too is uh, under window you can go, they have an asset store where you can actually buy stuff that they have for the people to make for you. So really if you're just all into programming, if you want a bunch of 3D models or like here's the boot camp demo for free, you can get a bunch of stuff for free or if I had, you know, if I wanted to spend $65 I could maybe get the 2D toolkit for, for stuff or for the multiplayer. Um, like see so you get the, the Photon Boot Camp demo. So it, and the ultimate networking is like the big one I think. What I have is I've got like a free version of this one that was like before they went big and started selling it, but they have a big set of like mostly all uh, C sharp scripts, but it has you can see like the package contents and it gives you all like basic menus and stuff. So you can pretty much kind of get whatever you want. So if you want like a soldier model or something like, you know, you can get a soldier character pack and here's free. That's awesome. And then you've got all these, the FBXs, basically what they export it out to. So really, if you want to make a you know, game from scratch, you kind of can. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.